Welcome to my channel. Welcome to Miss Lion's channel. Hey guys, welcome to another week. Going remote, float your boat. Remote, remote, you gotta float that boat. Um, I hope you guys are doing really good. Um, we have a few weeks left. We're halfway through that C Q J, and we are going through some art history. And I hope you guys are enjoying the activities that bring to light what's happening from right inside. Um, you guys are sitting on the couch behind me because I miss seeing your faces. So you guys are all there and again in perfect behavior. Um, I totally love seeing you guys. I miss you like crazy. I know you can tell because I'm always like flustered on the meetups because I miss you. Um, and getting ready to give you your stuff. So more about that in the Google Classroom. Um, okay, so where were we? We left off on page 14. So we have our Impressionism, the optical color mixing page, where we are loosely putting colors together. And as you pull back, they kind of merge together as one. <clears throat> Moving forward, page 15, Impressionism. We've got that implied texture upside down, furry friend. This is little Missy, Miss Missy. This little cute pup, Runo. Oh my gosh, she's a little cutie. Never met her yet though. Okay, we, cause I'm locked, locked up. Just kidding. No, this is very important, you guys. Stay at home. Don't even get frisky, people. We gotta make sure everybody's safe, okay? Any weasel, moving forward, page 16, we have our pointillism. When you back it way up, things start to appear like um, one color. And then when you zoom in close, you can see all the colorful dots. All the colorful dots takes forever. Moving right along, page 17, we have our post-impressionism ideal backyard. Okay, mine's happening at sunset, and we're using those complementary colors to display that playful color harmony <clears throat> from our lovely Vincent Van Gogh. And number 18, page 18 that is, we have Expressionism. The synth, the, oh my gosh, I can never say it. Oh my gosh, it's like I'm camera shy with this word. Um, <clears throat> synesthesia, yeah. I think I'll get it one of these days. Anyway, um, listening to music, letting those colors, whatever you are feeling and seeing coming out as the music is actually happening at the same time. Okay, here we go. Page 19, 20, 21, 22, and 23. Uh, okay, here we go. This little pad of paper is getting very heavy. And it is what, hopefully it won't crash. Still pretty good. We're good, we're good, we're good. Okay, here we go. Got my notes. I also have my cheerleaders. Yay, they're cheering for me. They're like, we have a question. We're over here eating candy. We are over here laughing about Miss Lyon's weird hairdo. We are over here laughing about um, how it stinks over there. That's what's normally happening in the classroom, right? No, no, no. You guys are like perfect. Just kidding. I miss pumping the music. I miss a lot of things about being with you guys in the classroom and getting creative. Um, so I hope you guys are using these videos to pull out your creative omega-ness, if that makes sense. All right. Just a little, just a little pump me up there, right? Because I got my cheerleaders. Yeah, got my cheerleaders. Okay, page 19. Page 19. We have boom, 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 boom. Well, I just have to back it up one more just because my brain. Expressionism, and then we are going to go right down into cubism because we're talking about ab to the struct and cubism. So cubism, their one main artist along with others comes to mind and you definitely are probably already going bloop, bloop, I know who it is, I know who it is. Yes, my friends, Pablo Picasso. 
Pablo Picasso and a lot of others um, started this interesting way of creating art. And so they were all about distortions and changing the viewpoint, viewpoint on one canvas, on one surface. So, you know, you're looking at your profile of a picture and then you're looking head on, boom, merged it together, right? Um, a flattened perspective, meaning there was very little depth happening on the, um, on the canvas. Okay, so for this activity, what you're going to do is you have to prep a little bit and all you're gonna need is colored, uh, colored utensils of your choice. And um, you're gonna need to take a selfie, okay? Now, if you don't have access to a device, I don't know. Uh, then you can just sit in front of the mirror, okay? Um, but if you have your device, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to a spot where there's a nice big mirror. Um, for me, it's the bathroom. And I want you to take a selfie of you holding your phone, okay? So as you can see, I did one there, and then I did a different viewpoint. That's not my favorite viewpoint. Went all the way to the side. Look at that toothpaste. It's like an overflowing um, volcano. Okay, so three. Okay, so that was one, two, three. Oh, four, right? One more. Okay, so I took random like four take, okay? Go do a photo shoot with your phone. And then what you're going to do is you're going to use your device as, um, as you're drawing, and you're going to flip it, and you're going to draw things with this cubistic forms. And remember, we're going to be really kind of like, um, geometric five like like using geometric shapes and all that good stuff so let's get started i'm going to start with some lines because that's how uh the artwork usually has these nice broad thick lines um the i'm kind of actually by the weasel i probably already showed this but um i'm kind of reaching out from the one uh, there's a couple paintings actually that picasso did of women or whatever holding things um one comes to mind the girl with man uh the the mandolin so yeah, boom, I showed it, I showed it, I showed it. Now, we're going for like these crazy geometric forms. So I'm gonna first by start by um, using this picture and you can even zoom in and screenshot that puppy. And so you have a closer approach or you can have a farther, remember, you're gonna change it up. That's the cool thing. So here we go, I have my phone and it's kind of like boom and then Mm -hmm. And there's that. And then I'm going to now just draw, I think, the outside of my forehead coming down like this. My cheek and my lips are right there. So I'm going to just, okay. I'm going loose. Do my lips look like that? Really? Oh my gosh, lady. Okay, and then that was my cheek, and then my nose is kind of up here. Now, look, I'm being very kind of loose, guys. All right? So there's one viewpoint. I'm going to now move to the next picture with the next viewpoint, and I'm going to, that was the same one, and I'm going to draw another part of me on my paper here because this is going to really display um, Picasso's and all the other amazing, amazing artists, the use of cubism. And my eye is right here. And it's kind of point, like my eyes are like kind of looking that way. Okay. And I'm gonna make this eye as well now, looking the same direction. And more this way. Boom. And eyebrow. Okay, two viewpoints. Next. Now I'm going to draw with this viewpoint straight on the uh, toothpaste volcano effect picture. And let's do some straight head on picture. Maybe my hair and then my shoulder. Oh, I'm wearing those little splooshy bright blue, blue splooshies. And then my ear okay. So after I have sketched out a self-portrait of me holding my device with these big shapes, 
and my crazy fingers up in. okay and <laughs> we'll do my finger <laughs> okay awesome and then I could just finish it by coloring it out all right so we've got our cubism self-portrait and I'm gonna block color it you'll see with the artwork that I showed you how to color it out cubism super duper fun oh my gosh okay page 20 moving right along moving right along speaking of moving we're gonna talk about movement oh yeah movement oh yeah um the next uh time period we're gonna stop for a moment and collaborate is called futurism future in the future boom boom i feel like we're in the futurism because things are not the same and we're not can't can't really like can't predict i don't know i don't know feels weird okay but this time period ladies and gentlemen um was all about movement and technology and speed how fast things were going and um and th th during that time it was all about cars and airplanes and in industrial cities um so what these artists showed was the use of movement on the canvas it was it actual movement no we're not talking about like a water piece where you can see the water flowing down 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 that would be actual movement but we're talking about implied movement okay so implied movement is giving the effect that there's something moving on your canvas mo mom <laughs> no not mom movement even though i totally identify with that word <laughs> okay anyway um implied movement so how artists did this which you might have actually done this kind of before because it's just a really great way to show movement and uh da vinci was one of the you know founders of showing movement on paper um but it's the act of actually repeating the shape over and over again to give the illusion that it's implied moving okay so what i want you to do is i want you to think of for this particular project again you're just going to need some kind of coloring devices i mean coloring utensils and um i want you to draw that piece of technology in movement so if you for example let's uh, let me give you a few options here um so item in movement a uh, technology item tech item tech e item techie item techie item in implied movement okay so you can start off and think about things in the kitchen like i think about a toaster so maybe you want to just do a close-up of like the moving or or like it actually uh, toasting the bread something's moving like the, the bread is moving um, or like you pushing it down um other things I can think of are um, which there's a zillion um, are our regular devices that we use all of the time um, that you're holding right now or um, you know headphones um, earbuds um, speakers you name it whatever technology item you're thinking of and how would it look like if it was moving through the air it was airborne. Don't do that, though, please. Don't even try it just to see, okay? Unless it's like, I don't know. Okay, so for example, let me pick one and I'll show you what I'm talking about here. I'm trying to pick something that's really, really obscure um, because I don't know. I'm gonna use the mouse, okay? All right, so for example, if the mouse is on a table, I could display it falling off the table with like a series of mice, boom, 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 boom. If I wanted to show the, um, if I wanted to show the mouse flying through the air, like I just chucked it across the room, it's going to look very different, right? So it just depends on where like the item is being thrown and how, um, the context, right? Um, so I'm gonna like pretend like mine's going through the air. Um, why? Because, unfortunately, that actually could happen in my household. Although it better not, okay? 
Don't even try it. All right. Okay, so here we go. We have our little clicker here, our mouse. And it's flying through the air. So now I'm going to overlap. There it is again. And there it is again. Overlapping. Boop, boop, boop. Okay. Maybe over there. It got kind of whipped through the air. Okay. Um, and so this is really what I want you to show with this particular piece of artwork using colors to show the act of movement with something high tech because we're focusing on futurism. Okay, page 20, check. Page 21, moving right along. Probably forgot a zillion things, but I'm just gonna keep on rolling forward. We're getting super rich into art history and applying it to our lives and our current situation with all of a sudden pull the rug remote learning remote teaching you can't go anywhere oh no you can't go nowhere mm. okay 21 lady really i i'm doing my best to get it done be thorough and have capital f u n okay Moving right. This one is a good one too. The ready-made. This is where a lot of you guys bring this question up to me um, when we're discussing art, found art, or also called ready to the made. Ready made. So you guys have brought up like Miss Science, how is that art? When somebody puts just like a piece of like a uh, I don't know, something regular, like a blank canvas on the wall. And they're like, look, that's art. It's sold for $5 million. <laughs> so that's pretty much what this style of artwork is kind of um, communicating to the viewer. Like, this is not art. This is actually something used for something else. So I gave a weird example because a painting, like a canvas, is part of art. So where, it's, where I'm different, where this is more relative, Found art, you guys, are objects that were normally considered materials from um, a non-art function. So, for example, Marcel Duchamp's uh, urinal. He put he put a, he put a urinal right in. Um, I think he actually posted it like on a piece of wood. I think I believe I don't remember. He might have mounted it on something so it stood in a certain direction. But basically, that was his artwork. He got a urinal. He's like, this is art. And so um, so for this particular piece of art uh, artwork <laughs> called Found Art, I'm going to ask you guys, we're going to use Marcel Duchamp's um, couple of his pieces of artwork to come up with our own ready-made piece of artwork, which will all be about sketching. So what I want you to do for this project is you're going to um, combine or bring together two items that are not really used for artwork, okay? Like things that are found that are used and employed as a different function other than art. Um, kind of like non-traditional. Not, a lot of non-traditional non stuff going on, right? So what I'm going to say is I'd like them to kind of sit on top of each other, kind of like a totem pole, okay? It's kind of fun, all right? So here we go. Found art. It is warm in here, by the way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we go. I want you now to consider these three things. Number one, what is your favorite pen, lady pen? Um, your favorite, um, let's say, um, your favorite item in your room, favorite keepsake. Gosh, get it out, lady. You're like, I don't have a keepsake. I don't have a keepsake. Fine, then the piece of garbage on your dresser. Okay, just kidding. Think about it. Something that's really special to you that you have. Okay, for me, it would be my um, sticker book. <laughs> I'm serious, okay? I love my sticker book. It is very special to me. 
Um, I have a lot of other fun keepsakes too, but that one comes to mind. Okay, the next thing I want you to um, think about and consider is your, let's see, keepsake, um, something that you, a part of something that you do that is active, okay? So some part of you that you use for being active, whether that's you ride your bike, you ride a skateboard. Um, for me, it would be, I've been using the jump rope recently, so I'm gonna say jump rope. Um, but it's going to be your favorite exercising utensil. Favorite exercise item, noun. Because it could be something really large and it could be like something really little, okay? And then the next one I want you to think of is I want you to think of something that is, um, let's see, something that is just really odd, okay? O to the D to the D. And I don't know, the first thing that came to my mind right now was a rock. And I don't know why, but that's what I just, whatever comes to mind, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take these three items and you're going to make them come together as a piece of artwork, okay? But for this project, I actually want you to use pencil, okay? And so you're welcome to add color with color pencils, but I really want you to actually kind of make it look semi-realistic as much as you can, okay? Um, sometimes it helps to take a picture of each item, you know, to, just so you can have a reference, but it's not necessarily the case if you, you know, if you, if you wanna just sketch it out and do it the most realistic way as you can. So I would start maybe with my, and again, it's really up to me how I wanna make it work. Um, I think I'm gonna go with my, do, 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 ba, do, ba, do, ba, do, 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 I think I'm gonna have my rope tied around the rock and the book, okay? So I'd have my rock, well, for the rock part, you probably will have to, you know, maybe go get a rock as an inspiration. Um, but we're gonna go with shading and try to generally draw it as real as you can. Um, oh, it looks like more like a, that doesn't look like a rock lady. We need to work on it. We need to work on it, lady. All right, so moving right along, book, and then we have boo, 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 my sticker collection, and then my jump rope. Okay, and so, should you have fun with this? Yes! Hello! I hope you are having fun with this. This jump rope is gigantic. All right, so. Okay, okay. All right, so found art, putting three totally non-art items together, creating art, fine art, okay? Found art, page 21, found art, page 21, page 22, moving right along. Mmm, I love this one. Okay, I've been waiting for this one. I've been waiting the whole video for this. Okay, although I love the other ones, this one is one of my fake, fake favorites. Okay, so page 22, we're going to be talking about surrealism. Do, 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 do. Oh my gosh, surreal. You are one of my favorites, oh my gosh. Definitely surrealism is probably like one of my most influenced, uh, influent, like I've been so influenced by this particular genre of art. I just, I don't know, there's something about it that I just gets me super excited. Um, so surrealism, you guys, is all about um, kind of randomness. Um, allowing, just allowing your hand to flow onto the, canvas or on your paper and I mean that's really what I try to encourage you know you in class to do and just in you know in ceramics as well and in digi arts I mean there's a lot of technical things you know that we learn and stuff but this is really one of my big main threads that I'm really trying to um, help you um, tap into and just going with your gut and so that randomness is really that strong following that strong gut 
right down in your heart. Um, the second item in surrealism has to do with strange things, um, unreal, dreamlike, um, and uh, I'm almost like hallucinatory type stuff where things just are melting together and um, very playful, can be very dark, very sexual, Whoop, totally not appropriate for your age group, but it does. It has that kind of weird, those kind of innuendos. Um, so... One of the things that I want to focus here for this particular piece of artwork um, has to do with the great Salvador Dali. And so when we're looking here at his artwork, um, you know, you can see what's happening with the strange and randomness. Um, but what really, you know, really he hits is the use of juxtapositions. One of my favorite world, words in the whole world, juxtaposition. Um, speaking of juxtapose, that is a, one of my favorite all-time magazines, totally only for my adult viewers right now. Um, but once you are old enough, my students juxtapose this really cool magazine, um, all very much into current surrealism using technology and all that stuff. Totally not a commercial only for those of age 18 or over. Um, okay, so I had to say that out loud again. Um, okay, so for this particular project, and we're following, you know, our good old Salvador Dali, um, there's two choices for this project, okay? So I couldn't decide, so I just decided to throw a choice out there today for this one. So your first choice is you're going to um, juxtapose um, two items that come together as one, okay, J using juxtaposition, okay, this is choice one, juxtapose, juxtapose, okay, juxtaposition, and, um, what this means is you're bringing two unreal things together uh when you juxtapose something you're bringing two things that are different very much contrast and you're playing on that contrast to make a message if that makes sense so um i want you guys when you have time and you're in the mood um to watch one of my favorite trailer uh beginning theme songs of one of my favorite all-time shows and um, and so I'm going to leave the link below for you guys to watch them both. But this gives a real great example of what juxtaposition really means. Um, having two things to come together that do not, they totally um, contrast to really display um, a message. And it's so rad and scary. Um, and it's called The Outer Limits. And so the starter song from The Outer Limits, which I love that show, by the way, from the 90s, highly recommend. Um, so scary and weird. Um, it's the second one. So it's not the first original one, but I'll put both in the link. But the one I'm talking about is the one that was from the 90s. And so there's a point in the trailer or in the beginning song where the, there's a big house and then the house begins to um, grow roots, okay? So the house with the roots is the juxtaposition. And so the whole theme song are constant like plays of this just juxtaposition, I love it. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. I hope you guys like pause and go watch it and come back, okay? Because I'm not that sophisticated with my video editing skills. Um, so, okay, I'm leaving the link below. Juxtaposition. You need to watch the video, by the way, if you do this, okay? So you're going to bring two things that don't relate, and you're going to melt them together um, in a cup. And, you know, you can just even Google it. There's so many ideas. But don't just copy somebody's. I really want you to think. Two things that differ that come together. And you're going to play also with the, um, the space. Uh, so, for example, I mean, you know, maybe I'm holding the world in my hands. That's juxtaposition, okay? But don't use that one. Remember, come up with your own. So I'm just showing you that size can kind of be playful, okay? So remember that there. Okay, the other choice for surrealism is choice number two, okay? And your second choice is going to be using um, one of his paintings, Dolly's paintings, to come up with your own piece of artwork. And so on this particular picture, I want you to check out this persistence of memory. And in this painting, he uses melting clocks and things that, um, that are bringing together 
things that contrast to get your mind to think like a melting clock. Well, clocks can't melt. Okay. Um, and that's another example of juxtaposition. Um, so there's, it's very deep. This word's very, very deep. Um, so with this particular second choice, um, what you're going to do is you're going to draw a landscape. And for those of you guys who are um, choosing your juxtapose first choice, can you just watch this? Because I'm going to teach a concept about the rule of thirds right now. Please hold on. Don't fast forward because this is important, even though you may not use it in your particular piece of artwork. Okay. Um, so with this particular artwork, and you can do both for extra credit, extra omega points, guys. Okay. Extra virtual credit for this one if you do them both. Okay. Um, okay. Anyways, going back. So you're going to be making a very basic landscape, and we're going to be using the uh, the law of thirds for this particular picture. So what I want you to think about is when people make art or photography or take for photography, the rule of thirds is really important. What you're going to be doing is for this particular piece of artwork, um, you're going to make your landscape, and I just made a rectangle first because I got excited about my rule of thirds to show you. Um, so, but basically the rule of thirds is by making a tic-tac-toe sign inside your artwork or your canvas. So I did that and then my tic-tac-toe, I'm going to evenly spread them. Tic-tac-toe, three in a row. See that? Tic-tac-toe. Um, what's happening here with the rule of thirds is that when you show emphasis in these areas, it brings, um, it brings harmony to the painting or the canvas. Um, and, and so a lot of artists practice the rule of thirds to really bring um, a, a further dynamic piece of artwork. So in your landscape, your landscape could be quite simple, as we saw in Dolly's painting. It was very simple. Um, you can just start by making your lines on the ground. It could be in the desert. It could be really however you decide, but it can be very simple as well. And I didn't make the entire horizon yet because I might have something that comes up here. And so what you're going to be doing is you're going to be drawing things that are kind of on those points to bring um, harmony to our painting or our drawing, okay? And we're going to use juxtaposition. So a melting clock would be one idea. What if I were to draw um, right here on this, like, sitting underneath this cactus, I'm going to draw my phone is right here and it's laying under the cactus. There you are, Phonio. And it's bleeding. It got shot. <laughs> what? <laughs> Did I just say that? Oh my gosh. Craziness, right? Surrealism, yo. Okay, my phone is bloody. Okay. It's being way overused, got blisters, and now it's bleeding from all of the phone use, okay? All right, and as you can see here, when I'm drawing, what I forgot to mention, yo, is this rule of thirds right here, and where these cross is really where I wanna show my point of interest. So I actually already tacked into this and this side right there. So the next part, I'm just going to be drawing maybe something here or maybe something here and something small, just so that your eye flows so naturally, okay? And I want you to think about juxtaposition while you're doing this. Um, what else? Boom, 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 landscape. And then you're going to pick items that show juxtaposition. Um, okay, juxtapose using the outer limits as your inspiration, or you're going to go with a landscape using the rule of thirds and surrealism. Okay, we're getting super funky. Yay, surrealism. Okay, page 23. Is that it, everybody? Oh my gosh, that went by so fast. I know, I'm talking way too much. I'm trying not to bore you to death. Okay. <clears throat> the next one is we're going back into abstract expressionism, okay? Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. 
<clears throat> abstract. Expressionism. Shonism. Shonism. Okay. Um, so this artwork, you guys, um, what we're going to be really focusing another epic style of artwork, um, is about extreme emotional exposure. Okay. Extreme emotional, E-O, emo, 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 emotion, all exposure. Okay, triple E, all right, triple E yo. And um, inner impulses, just stating it for real. I mean, honestly, the last, you know, six weeks that we've been um, in our quarantine, I, I'm sure you have had some extreme emotional exposure. Um, some maybe you're not super proud of. I mean, I'm just speaking from personal experience. Eh? Um, but guys, holy moly, this is like the real deal here. Um, so I think this one's going to hit home for a lot of you, as it is going to for me. Um, so what we're going to focus on for this last uh, activity in our CQJ for the week is all about the amazing Jackson Pollock. And... Um, his paintings, I'm sure you can even think of one because, um, you know, he's very popular. And um, he creates these paintings that are drips of paint all over the place in just these large canvases. Um, and so he he's painting in the moment completely raw. He did have a method of like which direction and he would do things in like he did actually have a plan of action, I guess, from what I remember reading. Um, but he would go right flow in the moment. And so what I want you guys to do for this particular piece of artwork is going to involve some preparation. Okay, so to prepare for this, I don't want you guys to do it directly on your paper. I guess you can it if you if you you can if you want B U T one T. I just get worried that your um, C Q J will get too tainted. Okay, and we still have many pages to go, and I don't want to like I want to save your other pages so they're nice and beautiful. Okay, so for this particular artwork, I'm going to ask you to actually cut out a small piece of paper. Um, hopefully, you have a piece of paper um, that you can cut. And so I'm just going to go for a size about, I don't know, a finger by a finger, or you could go a little bit bigger, but it needs to fit in your CQJ. If that, does that make sense? It's got to fit. Okay. So here we go. And then I want you to use the resticle for like a placemat. Okay. Or get another piece of paper. Okay. You need a placemat for this because it's going to get messy. All right. Here we go. My piece of artwork. Placemat. Okay, my room. Okay, got some notes back here. Okay, all right. So what you're going to do, you guys, is as you can imagine, you guys are going to, um, I want you to explore um, splatter paint and paint dripping. Um, now, I hope you have paint. That would be awesome and helpful. Um, if you don't have paint, then you could use food dye or you could use non-traditional um, liquids. Um, you know, so it's up to you. I mean, preferably if you have paint would be the best. I actually do have some paint for those of you who are going to use like a heavy body acrylic, you're going to want to water it down. So it's like a little loose. Okay. A little loose for me. I'm just going to use my acrylic markers and I'm just going to cause them to bleed. I know I'm going to treat you not so good right now. Okay. These are the colors that I just picked up. So I'm going to Get them all ready to go. So now um, some of you in class have seen different a variety of ways of splattering your paint. Um, if you want to explore with that and you have um, like um, an old toothbrush, um, toothbrushes and watercolor paint work great. You can just like, sh like you just get it wet with the toothbrush and then you just like use your finger to flow and that'll kind of create spray. Um, yeah, what else? Um, I know a lot of you are really creative and you already have ideas for this and you already know because you've been, you've done it a zillion times. Which is not really good for a demonstration when things go wrong. Um, so what are you going to do? What are you going to do, lady? What are you going to do? How are you going to make it work? 
Um, all right. So it looks like my paint is drying too fast because it's okay. Here we go. Yeah. Okay. So Jackson Pollock, please make sure you are careful to prep, 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 so you don't make a giant mess. Oh my gosh. Okay, now it's getting fun. So I'm just dipping my finger into the acrylic paint and then I'm dipping my finger into my cup of water. Okay, and then I'm going to move on to the next color. Super duper fun. Um, and then after that, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to let a DRY, okay, dry up. And then you guys are going to uh, tape or glue it down to your paper, okay? Now, I didn't tell you guys this, but I really enjoy that when I see some of your artwork on your assignments, that I've noticed you're taking these amazing notes. And I think that is awesome. This will be such a great little um, keepsake of information about our general amazing art terms that you will use forever. Okay, so I got a lot of work to go though, but um, it's looking pretty good. Okay, that's page 23, abstract expressionism, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, let's go backwards really quick. Let's go backwards really quick. Okay, that's 23. Uh, Pollock, extreme emotional exposure, exposing, okay. Page 22, surrealism, choice A, juxtapose, juxtapose the outer limits. Dun, 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 dun. Or your landscape, landscape using the rule of thirds. Okay, page 21, found art, thing, taking things from everyday use and turning them into fine art. Super, super controversial. Okay, still. Page 20, futurism, the showing of implied movement, moving through the air, or moving on its own, okay? I don't know. Yeah, maybe you're remote, you know? I don't know. Anyway, moving last one, page 19, cubism, self-portrait, okay? I hope you guys enjoyed these um, different activities as I did. I can't wait to finish them up um, because it's so capital F-U-N. Um, I hope to see you guys at our next meetup. And until then, I can't wait to see your work and I hope you're doing really good. One last thing I wanted to mention about the Q2 goals. I think that was like page two of our CQJ. Yeah. I want you to go back and just kind of look at your, your goals and just kind of like, hmm, have I done this? Yes. Um, ha have I done it a lot? Maybe. I don't know. But remember, when you are having set things down as a goal for yourself to bring yourself happier, a, happy, a happier existence here, ladies and gentlemen, writing it down is a foolproof way to help those things come to life. So I hope you're looking back on those cue uh, four goals um, because I want all my students happy and healthy even if we have to be quarantined and can't see each other in person. <gasps> Anyways, until next time you guys, bye!